Welcome to the best side hustles that you can do after you get off of work. When I quit my job back in 2018 to do side hustles full time, I applied three specific tricks to help shortcut that success that I really don't hear too much on YouTube. So today I'm going to show you those three tricks and how you can implement them in your life without it getting in the way of your nine to five. Then we're going to go through nine side hustles, each specifically designed to be done in your free time, even if you got kids running around. We will cover what each side hustle is, how you can get started, and what each one pays. And the last couple on this list I have specifically chosen because they are the most passive out of all of them. Check it out. It is my goal to take all of the knowledge that I've taken in over the years and help prepare you to make some real changes in your life. Let's go. All right, so let's talk about the three tricks that you need in order to shortcut your success with side hustles. So trick number three is you need to have a YRY. Now pay attention because this framework is really what helped me when I was first getting started because everything else at the time was failing me. YRY means your reason why. When I started doing side hustles back in 2015, I was really bad at sticking to one particular thing and just staying with it. I was always going from one place to another, you know, the whole shiny object syndrome stuff. I tried dozens of of different side hustles and even made a little bit of money with some of them, but I always found myself back in the same place, depending on my nine to five. But one day I was listening to a podcast and the guest on the podcast said something really interesting that really kind of opened up my mind. He basically said that if you are having money as your number one reason to be successful with anything, you will fail. Basically, you need a deeper reason why you are doing something other than just trying to make an extra few bucks. So I thought to myself, what is my reason why? And about a year later, my wife and I found out that we were going to be having our first son and boom, there was my reason why. She wanted to stay with him full time and I had about nine months to figure it out. So once I clearly had my reason why defined, trick number two is really what defined everything for me. And I'd love to tell you that I completely figured this out, but even today, this is something I still struggle with and it's consistency. But there are three things that I use to help me be more consistent. Number one was to set goals and to hold myself accountable. You see, when you work a nine to five, you have a manager or a boss who basically tells you everything that you need to do. You need to do this at nine o'clock, do this at 10 o'clock, make sure this is due by five o'clock, whatever. But when you're working for yourself and trying to generate your own money, you need to create your own goals. Set small, realistic goals that actually have dates on them where you need to hold yourself accountable for actually following through and doing it. Which leads me to the next best thing about being consistent and that's setting a schedule. Always remember this important point that I learned a long time ago. A plan without a date on it is just a dream. So sit down, take a calendar out, set a goal for a month, set a goal for six months, set a goal for a year, your reason why is going to help you remain consistent and setting schedules. But even then, I still struggle with trying to be consistent and trying to set a schedule, but then I actually did something that really broke open everything for me, and that's trick number three, and that's outsourcing. I'm not the biggest numbers guy in the world, so sometimes I hire an agency to do my taxes. I'm okay at writing, but I'd rather hire someone else to do that for me because they're much better at it. And I'm actually pretty decent at editing, but I would actually like someone who does it for a living to do it for me. That way it's done fast and it's done right. By trying to do everything yourself, even if you're not great at any of them, but you just need to do it, you're going to end up burning yourself out. Something that I've done at least two or three times since I've started my businesses. And the big reason why I burned out each one of those times was because I failed to enlist some help. Always remember the best things to outsource are the things that you don't like doing. Otherwise, they'll never get done. Now, here is a hurdle that actually took me a little while to get over. Do not be afraid to hire someone to help you do something that you're not that great at. So for example, when I wanted to learn how to grow my Instagram account, I went out and hired a coach for me to learn Instagram. So if you are short on money, you will have to pay in something else called your time. So you will have to just go on YouTube and find all of the free resources that are out there. I firmly believe with YouTube University, you can learn almost anything that you want. You just have to spend the time to actually look for it, find it and consume it. All right, so now that we have the perfect framework that we need in order to be successful with any side hustle that we want, now let's get into the nine side hustle that you can do after you get off of work. And remember, the last two on the list are the most passive of them all. Can't wait to get into it. So number nine is a home stager. Now, if you've ever looked at a vacant property that you were thinking about moving into, whether it's a house or an apartment or whatever, you probably had to go in there and it's completely empty and you have to use your mind to imagine where your stuff is going to go. So what a home stager does is they come in and they decorate these empty homes so that when they are being shown to potential buyers, it makes it a lot easier for them to visualize themselves 
themselves living in the house. You would work with real estate agents who are looking to sell properties, and then you would even probably bring in your own stuff to really make the houses look nice. There is a little overhead involved with this type of opportunity because you will need your own furniture and you will need somewhere to store that furniture so that you can pick and choose what you might need to put into a house to make it look as best as possible. To be a good stager, there are four things that you're going to need. Number one, good organizational skills. Number two, be a clean person. Number three, attention to detail. And number four, interpersonal skills so that you can actually have a conversation with somebody. To drum a business, reach out to a lot of local real estate agents in your area and ask them if they have houses that they would love to have staged. If you are just getting started with this, start off small by making your own house or apartment look nice. That way you can take some pictures and show them to the real estate agents that you have the know-how on how to make something look nice and available to buy. The salary for a home stager can be about 80,000 or so dollars per year, but if you take the entrepreneurial route and actually start your own business with it, you can make so much more than that. Number eight on our list is 3D printing and shout out to Clayton Designs for this side hustle. It's pretty awesome, so let's check it out. The things that you can make with a 3D printer are crazy. We're talking about dental implants, architectural models, jewelry, medical models, custom auto parts. Really, your imagination is the only limitation you have. To attract customers, I would definitely niche down, meaning focus on one type of product that you can create with a 3D printer and then market it as much as you can. Do some research by going to places like Etsy, looking up Shopify stores that are in your space, and then maybe even creating your own website, which would be super helpful in promoting your products. Since we are talking about an actual physical product, there are a few things you want to keep in mind before you jump into it. Number one, you're going to need to pay for the materials to build the products. You need to maintain your 3D printing machine, and then you have to actually go out and buy a 3D printer machine. They are a bit of an investment to get started. Some entry level ones can cost you anywhere from two to $500. Mid-range ones, which is probably the one that I'd recommend for you the most, will cost you anywhere from $500 to $2,000. And then they have pro level ones that are over two grand. In the comments of a YouTube video, I was able to talk with Clayton Designs about how they earn $1,600 a month just doing this on the side from their regular architectural job. And they're able to charge about $400 per gig, which is pretty decent money. What if I told you that you can make a decent income just by playing games with older people? Look, the thing is, old people are awesome, all right? They really are, but not everyone thinks so, unfortunately. Too many times kids are shipping their grandparents or their parents to these homes and then never seeing them again, which is really sad. But that is where being a senior sitter or a companion really comes through because you can be of help to people who need it. Essentially, your job would be to help people around the house and just spend time with them. This can include running errands, cooking food, cleaning up, or just hanging out. Some of these positions would require that you have at least some type of medical background, but not all of them. So just be sure to read the descriptions of the jobs you're looking at. But one of the best things about this opportunity is the flexibility. You can do this on the weekends, you can do it in the evenings, you can do it part-time or even per diem, depending on your circumstance. To find opportunities like this within your area, just pull up good old Google and search for elderly companion caregiver, search for independent living skills training, or just plain old elderly sitter. The pay ranges from around thirty to $40,000 per year, so it's not something you're going to get rich off of. However, you're providing a service by just being a friend. Definitely give this opportunity a look. When you are working a nine to five, you plan your life around your work, meaning work first, life second. But when you do this next side hustle, you plan your work around your life. Freelancing allows you to make the rules so that you can determine what schedule you want to work and still make a decent amount of money. But the best thing about freelancing is the change of mindset that you have. Again, when you're working a nine to five, you're doing everything that you can within an eight hour period to try to get things done. However, you have to flip that when you become a freelancer. You are now getting paid for individual tasks that you are doing. There are three main steps that you can use to get started with freelancing. Number one is to find a skill that you can do digitally. We're talking video editing, graphic design, or maybe even becoming a virtual assistant. So once you have decided onto a specialty for the freelancing work that you would like to do, you now need to pitch your services to as many people as possible. Places like Upwork, Fiverr, and People Per Hour are great places to get started if you want to do this all online. You could also jump onto social media and start answering questions within whatever space you decide to jump into, but we'll talk about that more later in this video. And then number three, once you have pitched your services and you start getting hired for some jobs, you need to deliver a good product. The more that you wow your clients and really give them a lot more than what they asked for, the more work you're going to end up getting because other people are going to see that you're not just a faker. The pay for freelancers actually differ quite a bit, but for example, video editors are earning hundreds of thousands of dollars just editing videos for YouTubers like me. But regardless, you just need to develop a skill and then promote it to people to help them out, which is just like our next side hustle, retail arbitrage. Now, retail arbitrage is a really cool 
little side hustle that I'm seeing blowing up on YouTube at the moment. It's so popular that even Gary Vee himself says that you can make multiple six figures just by doing it. So for example, here is a game that's called Ticket to Ride that was found at a garage sale for $2. It was originally like three, but the guy was able to negotiate and get it down to $2. But when you go on eBay, you realize that this exact same game is being sold for over $40 on average. So in this example, this guy took a $2 product and sold it for around $23. Now, $20 might not seem like a lot, but what if you did this five times a day? All of a sudden, that 20 bucks starts adding up, and then once you actually have some cash on hand, you can buy bigger things and start flipping stuff for more and more money. One thing that I used to do was buy and sell computers. I would find some broken down computers that were still salvageable because I had a little know-how on how to fix them. I do my little tinkering to get them to run well and then turn around and sell them on eBay for a profit. I won't lie, it's a lot of work because you gotta go around finding these opportunities, but it is kind of fun to do. And once you get the ball rolling, you can make a decent amount of money. But another side hustle that you can do in your free time is building websites. Now this side hustle can make you at least $75 per hour when you work it right. When I used to build websites for companies, one thing that I would do was specialize on one specific type of website build, and that was with WordPress. I got really good at it to the point to where I could repeat the process over and over again. The trick is to find people who actually need this kind of thing. And the best way to do this is just go out to your local stores and local places within your area and figure out what they actually need. If they have like an old looking website or if it just doesn't convert well and it's not really driving any new business for them, you can pitch to create them something new that actually will rank in Google and get them new business. 50 to $75 per hour is about how much you can make even on the low end. So for example, this guy right here earned over $100,000 building websites and this guy has made over $500,000 building websites. It's just a matter of doing. Now, if building websites isn't for you, maybe your gift is your interesting voice. And you can use that voice to make a decent amount of money and become a voice actor. It's pretty easy to get started because as long as you have a PayPal account and a decent microphone, you can get started. A mic like the one that I'm using right here is around 400 bucks, which is definitely on the higher end. However, there are plenty of cheaper ones on Amazon, like the Shure MV7, which will run you around $180, the Shure SM58, which will run you about $99, or the Audio-Technica AT2020, which will run you about 120 bucks. Most of these will plug right into your computer and you can start recording immediately. Now to find side hustle gigs as a voice actor, there's four places I recommend you go check out. Number one is voices.com. It's very simple to get started. All you need to do is create a profile, set your earnings, get hired, and then you do have to pay them a 20% fee. Other places you can check out are Fiverr, Upwork, and even backstage.com. In addition to having a decent mic, you will need to have a nice enclosed area. Think about like a closet or a room that's nice and sound protected. Voice work can really make you a decent amount of money. We're talking anywhere from $2,000 to $20,000 per month. All right, so now it's time to sit up straight because we're now going to talk about the best options that you have for starting a side hustle that you can do in your free time after work. In fact, if you decide to do a side hustle at all, these next two, you have to at least consider them because the amount of money you can make with them is pretty outstanding. Let's get into it. So did you know that it's possible to make thousands of dollars just by simply sending emails? Well, with a digital newsletter, anything is possible. It's just as simple as collecting new email addresses and then sending valuable content. What I like most about newsletters is the amount of time that it takes you to do it. You don't have to spend tons and tons of time coming up with the content, especially if you're only sending to that email list once a week or twice a week. An example of this would be like a golf shop owner who lives in my area where anytime someone comes in, he gets their email address. And he normally does this by giving away some free stuff like a free golf glove or some golf balls. Once he gets their email address, he just continues to pile them up as much as possible. That way he has a group of people who are all interested in golf that he can email at any specific time. Now he can go to other places around his area who want to market to those people and then charge them to put advertisements in his emails. He sends around four emails a month, so once a week, and he charges around $200 just to be mentioned in one of these emails. Now here is the kicker. The amount of money you can make with this is insane. It's, it's massive, all right? Because once you have built up a decent sized email list or a decent sized digital newsletter, you can actually sell that resource to any company that was willing to buy it. So for example, the industry drive right here, they had a newsletter and was able to sell it for $525 million. And then the peak newsletter, after about three years, was able to sell it for $5 million. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to become a millionaire just by starting a newsletter, but even if you got a percentage, a fraction of what these bigger companies are getting, you'd be able to make some decent money. And the next most passive side hustle that we have is starting a YouTube channel. Now, I know everyone says that you need to go start a YouTube channel, but that's because it actually works. But I can also assure you that I'm not trying to sell 
sell you a YouTube course or anything. But here's the best part about starting a YouTube channel. You don't necessarily need to have a lot of views in order to make a decent amount of money. Now it helps, don't get me wrong, but there are smarter ways that you can monetize outside of just getting a ton of views. So for example, a lot of people complain that if they were to create a YouTube channel and then they post a new video and it got like 27 views or something, or maybe 50 views, then they're complaining because they're not getting a lot of views to that video. However, imagine if you had a whole room of 27 people who are willing to listen to you. So take that opportunity of the few people that are watching you and help them out of some type of jam. Provide a solution that they're looking for and then find a way to make some money behind it. I've had the bulk of my success with partnering with companies and making money from them. To get started, you don't even need like a very expensive camera or anything. Chances are you have a phone in your pocket that will work just as fine, at least for you to get started. So get a tripod off of Amazon. They're like really cheap, like nine bucks if you can find the right one and start creating content for a very small group of people and eventually it'll grow. So don't be afraid to give YouTube a try. All you really need is probably one video to really do well and it can help set up everything for the rest of your life. Now, even though side hustles are a great way to make an extra amount of money outside of your nine to five, they're not all created equal. Some side hustles are better than others. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the side hustle that I'm doing right now, where I plan on making an additional six figure income just this year and how you can do it as well. I believe in you and it's about time that you believe in yourself. Take care.